Good morning, good afternoon, good evening class. This is Mr. Erosena, and today we are going to be talking about how to balance a full redox reaction. Um, there are kind of two ways to go about this. The first is with half reactions, which is what I will show you today. And the second way is to do it with oxidation numbers, which I probably won't show you in class, but I'll, pro I'll make a video about it uh, later this week, and then you guys can decide which method you prefer. Um, the balancing by half reactions is probably the um, easier way to do it, but it can be quite tedious. As we saw on Friday, when you were balancing half reactions, some of the reactions might have been a little tedious as far as um, the process. Uh, the process I don't think is overly difficult, but again, there could be some tedious things. With full redox reactions, the, um, the reason why I say it's kind of tedious is because well, instead of doing it with, um, or sorry, instead of balancing one half reaction, you're going to be balancing two half reactions. So it's basically one problem, but really two reactions is kind of like twice the fun. All right. So when balancing uh, redox reactions using oxid or half reactions, you're going to need two half reactions. One will be an oxidation, one will be a reduction. So as we were discussing earlier with redox reactions, every redox reaction takes place, requires one thing to oxidize, one thing to get reduced. So the process is relatively simple because once you identify what the oxidation reduction is and what the re reduction reaction is, then you just balance them as individual half reactions, at least at first. Now, uh, once you have both oxidation and reduction reactions balanced, then we combine them together, and then we can eliminate things on both sides, and then whatever's left over will be the final reaction. Now, one key point I have to make is this step here. So this is kind of like step five. Okay. Uh, step five happens before we combine everything. So step five is where we multiply each half reaction by some whole number. And the idea we behind this is that we want to do this so that we can get equal number of electrons because by the end of the reaction, there should be no electrons present. And um, this is kind of builds off of what you guys learned in Science 10 and, and Chem 11 in that when we write fully balanced chemical reactions, we don't have any electrons. So same is true with a fully balanced redox reaction. There should be no electrons. Okay. All right, let's go through an example. Uh, so we're going to balance the, I think I have like three examples of balancing half reactions. So the first reaction is as follows. So it's osmium plus iodate will produce osmium oxide and iodide. All right, so we have to identify what is being oxidized, what is being reduced. Okay, so let me grab this picture. All right, so what is being oxidized? What is being reduced? Let's grab this and move it down. All right, so which reactant gets reduced? So we identify which one of these is going to get reduced. Well, reduction is a loss of oxygen. Loss of oxygen. That's the easy, I'm yeah, sorry, that's the sneaky trick of trying to decide which is being reduced. Uh, reduction is a loss of oxygen. Um, our doesn't yeah. Our original definition of reduction was the thing that gains electrons. But then one of the sneaky tricks I sh mentioned when we first discussed it last week was that if you can't quite tell right away what's gaining electrons, look for whichever is losing oxygens. So in this case, I will put a square around it. This is the thing that is losing electron or losing oxygen. Sorry, losing losing oxygen because it's going from IO three minus to I. Two. So originally it had three oxygens, now it has no oxygens and I2. So let's balance this first. So I O3 minus going to I2. So the first step is to balance any of our non-oxygen atoms, non-oxygen atoms, that's the iodine. So I'll put a two here, that'll balance out the oxygens. That next we balance, or sorry, not oxygens, it balances out the iodines. Next we balance the oxygens by adding water. So we need to add six oxygens, so we're going to add six waters to balance out the oxygens. And after that, we balance out the hydrogens. We will need 12 of them, so 12H+. 
plus. And then finally, we need some electrons to balance everything out. Um, we have two negatives. So this side has, or uh, yeah, reactant side has a total charge of 10 positives. Uh, product side has a total charge of zero. So we'll just throw down um, move this over a little bit. We'll throw down, I think, 10 electrons. 10 electrons. There we go. All right. So this is our balanced. So this here is our balanced reduction reaction. Okay. Balanced reduction. Okay, so keep that in your mind. Keep that in your mind. Don't lose that. Okay, the next thing we want to do is identify. Okay, so I can bring this up a bit. Okay, we don't actually need this bit before. Get rid of that. All right, so next, we, if the iodine or iodate is getting reduced, then the other substance is getting oxidized, which kind of makes sense because our osmium is becoming osmium oxide, so it's going from osmium and then suddenly getting four oxygens. So that's going to be our oxidation reaction. So osmium going to OSO4. All right, so first thing, we'll balance the... Uh, the osmium's already balanced, so we don't do anything there. Uh, so instead, we'll balance the oxygens by adding water. After we balance the oxygen by adding water, we then balance the hydrogens by adding H pluses. Uh, oh, we need eight of these. And then lastly, we balance the charges. We need to add eight electrons here. Okay, there we go. So this is now our balanced, balanced oxidation. Okay, the next step is then to add or to multiply each of these reactions by some number so that we get even number or so we get equal amounts of electrons on both sides and how to do that well concept from like math 8 or math 9 maybe even earlier we find the lowest common multiple of the following of this number and this number of 10 and 8 lowest common multiple happens to be 40 so we will multiply this equation by 4, and we'll multiply this equation by 5. Yeah. So, excuse me. So the resulting equation will look like this. And this is going to look really, really big. All right, so the first reaction, we will then get, um, I think I can maneuver these around. So I'm going to Grab this, I'm gonna move it down a bit. I guess I can bring this with it. That's still a balance, still my balanced oxidation. All right, let's write down, let's use purple to show. Okay, so the first, the oxidate or the reduction reaction, multiply by four, so we get 48H plus, plus 8IO. Three minus plus four d electrons, producing four i two plus twenty four h two o. Okay. Uh, the reaction down here. Let me just move this LCM a bit over here. Okay. The oxidation reaction then becomes five O S plus 20 H2O, producing 5 OSO4, plus 40 H plus, plus 40 E minus. All right, now we look for things that appear on both sides. The electrons, we have 40 electrons on both sides, so they cancel out. We have 40 hydrogens on this side, that cancels out 40 of them on this side, leaving us with eight. Well, we have 20 waters on this side, which will cancel out the 20 waters on this side, so leaving us with 4. And then we combine everything together, and we get a final equation that looks like this. So, on the reactant side, you have 8 H plus plus 8 IO3 minus plus 4 
plus 5 OS. Producing uh, 4 I2 plus 4 H2O. Oh, my LCM is getting in the way again, so I'll just delete it. Uh, 4 H2O plus 5 OS04. There you go. And if everything checks out, everything should be balanced. We'll count them up. We have 8 iodines, 8 iodines. We have 3 oxygens plus... Yep, 3 ox... No, wait. We have 24 oxygens, sorry. We have 4 oxygens there, and then 20 oxygens there. So 24 oxygens on each side. We have 8 hydrogens. We have 8 hydrogens. 5 osmium, 5 osmium. We're good there and then charges are they balanced uh product side has zero charge uh reaction side also has zero charge so yeah so there this is our fully balanced redox equation balanced redox equation balanced redox equation all right like I said, uh, not overly difficult, just very, very tedious because now you're solving two problems and then doing lowest common, lowest common multiple math. Sorry. Okay, let's go through another example. And if you guys need to watch this example again, feel free to watch the example again. Go right ahead. All right. Uh, next example. We'll balance the following. Okay, so here's a permanganate ion, an oxalate ion, and we'll balance this. All right, so first to identify uh, the doesn't actually matter which one you start. Let's start with this one. We'll do that one first. So we'll balance that one first. M and O four minus going to MnO2. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, uh, Mn's already balanced. Good. So now we just need to balance the oxygens. We're going to add H2O. We should add two of them. Then we have to balance the hydrogens by adding H+. And finally, I need to add some electrons to, I think... side. Oh yeah, react, reactant side, I think. So we'll add four? No, not four. Three, three, three. Three electrons. Three electrons because we have zero charge on the product side. We have a negative and four positives and three more negatives. Right. Next, we, next, we balance the next reaction. Now notice for this particular problem, I'm not actually identifying what's the... Um, oxidizing reaction or what's the reduction reaction because quite frankly I don't really need to if I know what one of if I know one species is uh, losing oxygens then I can just focus on that and then whatever's left over is going to be the other half of the reaction yeah so don't fall in the trap into thinking you need to identify both just if you find one then, you, then the other kind of naturally falls out of it all right, so this reaction, I will need some waters. No, I don't need waters. I need to balance the Cs first. So I'll put a 2 there to balance out my carbons. And surprisingly, that also balances out my oxygens. Cool. I just need to balance charge. I've got two negatives there, so I need two electrons here. Okay, right. now we figure out... Let's see, we need to find the lowest common multiple of 3 and the lowest common multiple of 3, or 3 and 2, sorry, I guess. So LCM, lowest common multiple of 3 and 2, and that one should be easy. That one is 6. So, the first equation. We will take this equation and we'll multiply it by 2. And then we will take this equation and multiply it by 3. So as a result, uh, I should have given myself more room, okay, moving these down a bit. So as a result here, we will get six electrons, 
plus 2 MnO4 plus 8 H plus going to 2 MnO2 plus 4 H2O. And then below it, we will then get 3 C2O4 2 minus going to 6 CO2 plus 6 E minus. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, electrons cancel out like we wanted and that's all that can cancel out so our final equation will be on the reactant side we get 2 MnO4 okay uh, minus plus 8 H plus plus 3 C2O4 2 minus excuse me all going towards 2MnO2 plus 4H2O plus um, 6CO2. Oh, yeah. And there is my balanced equation, balanced redox equation. Again, a little tedious because you have two uh, half reactions to work with, even though it's still only one problem. Yes, I know. Uh, science can be tedious sometimes. Science can most definitely be tedious sometimes. <coughs> oh, wait. I forgot. Uh, this occurs in a basic solution. Okay, that changes a bit. That changes a bit. Um, let's fix this. Let's fix this. Okay, so occurs in basic. Occurs in basic. So what this means is then that we need to convert, sorry about that, I totally messed up that slide, convert the H plus to OH minus uh, using the equilibrium expression H2O going to H plus plus OH minus, oops, OH minus, or uh, the other one is H plus plus OH minus going to H2O. Now we want to get rid of this. Since the hydrogen appears on the reactant side, we will choose this one. Then we want to get rid of eight of them, so we're going to have to use this eight times. As a result, our reaction will be um, 2 MnO4 minus 8 H plus plus 3 C2O4 2 minus going to 2 MnO2 plus 4 H2O plus 6 CO2 and then below that you can write down 8 H2O going to 8 H plus plus 8 OH minus Hydrogens cancel out like what we wanted to. Um, these four waters will get rid of four waters here, leaving you with four. And combine everything. Okay. We have two MnO4 minus plus three C2O4. Oops, geez, I totally messed up that number. C2O4 two minus plus four H2O going to. 2MnO2 plus 6CO2 plus 8OH minus. Okay, there, and we're done. Now we're done. Now we're done. Now we're done. Okay, so basic, uh, balancing in basic is even more tedious simply because you have this extra conversion step. Okay, extra conversion step, just like what we talked about last week. All right, sorry about that, everyone. I thought that was the only thing on the slide. All right, let's go on to the next example now. Next example. Okay. So, uh, let's balance the following. Um, oh, there's an example of where the one substance undergoes both. <laughs> so remember I said at the very beginning of this unit, some substances have the ability to be oxidized or reduced. Uh, well, here's one example. Uh, interestingly enough, this happens to do it in the same reaction. 
All right, so this is an example of when a substance gets oxidized and reduced and the same reaction, okay? So the reactions will be as follows. You will get one reaction will look like this, ClO2 minus going to ClO3 minus. And then the other reaction will be ClO2 minus going to Cl minus. So there are my two reactions. So I think uh, this one, I'll highlight it in red. This one is the oxidation because it's gaining oxygen. And this one is the reduction because it is losing oxygen. All right, let's balance it out. So first things first, um, I do believe the chlorines are balanced, but this one needs water there to balance out the oxygens and then I need an H plus. I need two of them I think. And I need at least one electron. I think that's right. Let's see. I have a negative one charge, negative one, two oh, I need actually more electrons than that. I need three electrons. There we go. Over here, uh, I'll add the waters on this side. I will need two of them to balance out the oxygens and I four H pluses on this side to balance out the hydrogens and then I need uh, four electrons on this side to balance out the charges making sure everything's correct uh, let's see top of the oxidation equation has one negative now it has um, oh I made a mistake I only need two electrons in this reaction I only need two electrons in this reaction Mistake. There we go. That balances out the charges nicely. Yep. Over here, the reduction reaction, I have four charge of five negative plus four, so one negative. Okay, everything's good. So now I need now I look for a lowest common multiple, lowest common multiple of two and four. Uh, that is 4, so I need to multiply this equation by 2. As a result, I will get the following. I'll get 2 ClO2 minus plus 2 H2O going to 2 ClO3 minus plus 4 H plus plus 4 E minus. Let me start cancelling. Uh, the 4 electrons cancel out like we intended. The 4H pluses cancel out, which was kind of unintended. Uh, the 2H2O also cancel out. Again, not really intended, but that's just the way everything falls in. And the resulting equation looks like this. Uh, 2ClO2 minus plus ClO2 minus going to Cl minus plus 2ClO3 minus. And then these ones we can just combine together to get 3ClO2 minus going Cl minus plus 2 ClO3 minus. There we go. And there's our balanced equation. So disproportionate react, disproportion, disproportionation reactions that are actually easier to work with, I think, because you just take one substance or use the same substance for both the oxidation and the reduction reaction. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, one more, another example, another example. Okay, so here we got some calcium phosphate, silicon dioxide, carbon, turning into phosphorus, and yeah, it, look, it looks like a big mess. It looks like a big mess. Okay, it looks like a big mess, big mess. All right, let's do this. So this, this type of reaction, whoops, wrong thing Oops. Uh, so this this reaction looks rather there we go. Uh, difficult because you have uh, let's count them up you have one you have three things or three things on the reactant side three things on the product side so I'm kind of wondering so, okay so what is actually going to be the oxidation and reduction reactions well uh, you don't actually need to know that and I'll show you why <laughs> okay so let's pick 
Uh, this. Let's pick this. Let's pick this. Okay. So if I choose this to be one of my reactions, I have to say the following. Okay, so my calcium phosphate you know, has to turn into okay, phosphorus, because the only place that the phosphorus can come from is from the calcium phosphate. It has to turn into this calcium silicate. I think that's what SiO3 is. Okay. But since there's no carbon in the calcium phosphate, there's no way that carbon di carbon monoxide can come from this calcium phosphate. Now, in order for this reaction to proceed, the calcium phosphate also needs something else. Because as one of the products, it turns into a silicate. So it needs silicon. So this calcium phosphate must combine with the silicon dioxide to create this substance. All right, now we can start balancing. That's one of the oxidation reduction reactions. You don't, well, we, oh, excuse me. It's not, we don't know whether it's the oxidation or the reduction. I mean, we could, we could figure it out, but at this point, it doesn't actually matter because if this is one of them, then the other reaction must be whatever is left over. So I'm just going to put these in boxes to show that these are part of one half of my oxidation, of my redox reaction, which means this, whatever is left, must be the other half. So this has to be the other half. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we have our two oxidation reduction reactions. Um, it's actually quite easy to tell once you've written them both down which one is which. Uh, this, uh, the carbon one is gaining oxygen, so this obviously is the oxidation, which means that this is the reduction reaction. All right. I'm just going to move this down a bit. Uh, why don't you guys go ahead and balance the oxidation reaction, and I will balance the reduction reaction. So to balance the reduction reaction, I need to balance first all the non-oxygen, non-hydrogen ions. So I've got three car, three calciums. I need three calciums. It gives me three silicons. So I need three silicons. Um, oh, that's gonna suck. I have a lot of phosphorus. So I'm gonna need two more phosphorus, two more of those to balance out the phosphorus, which means. Oh dear, so two of those to balance the phosphorus, six of those to balance the calciums, which means I need six of those to balance the silicons. Okay. All right, next I balance the oxygens. On this side I have a lot of oxygens. Uh, two times four times two, I have 16 oxygens, plus 12 oxygens, I have 28 oxygens altogether. This side I have 18 oxygens, so that'll 10 so 10 h2o <coughs> after i add the 10 h2o i need to balance the hydrogen so i need to add 20 h pluses on this side and then finally i need to add a bunch of electrons a bunch of electrons so i need let's see total charge on this side is 20 positives total charge on this side is zero so i need 20 electrons Wow, that was terrible. <coughs> By contrast, you guys should have easily done the oxidation reaction because all I need is one water molecule, two hydrogen molecules, and then and two electrons. There you go. <laughs> that was easy. Uh, now, next, we find lowest common multiple for the electrons. Lowest common multiple for the electrons is looks like 20, so I have to multiply this reaction by 10. Oh, that's easy. That's easy enough. I, don't I can just do this. All right, so multiply this reaction by 10. 10, 10, 10. <coughs> oh, excuse me. This becomes 20 now. 20 hydrogens. And then this becomes 20 electrons. Okay, 20. Alright, now we start cancelling things out. Okay. Oh, the electrons cancel out like we wanted. Hooray. Uh, turns out that... Oh, interesting. Turns out my hydrogens cancel out too. Cool. Um, anything else? Oh, waters. The waters cancel out. Ain't that cool. Okay, final reaction. 2CA3. Uh, 
P O four two plus six S I two plus ten carbons producing P four plus six calcium silicate and then ten carbon monoxides. There we go. Oops, wrong thing. There. Uh, yeah. There we go. Woo. Balanced, balanced, balanced. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So there you go. That's how you balance full redox reactions using half reactions. Okay. Um, I don't think it's overly difficult. Uh, if you follow your steps, you'll be just fine. You just have to balance redox reaction, or you just have to balance two half reactions. And then look for lowest common multiple and cancel stuff out after. That's about it. Okay, if you guys have any questions, um, I probably won't be able to answer them until I get back into class, but feel free to shoot me an email or a tweet if you uh, need help tonight, and I might be I should be able to answer it uh, later tonight. Hopefully when I'm feeling better. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, uh, your assignment then is going to be as follows. Um, yeah, it, it, it goes, I believe this is an A to like, L or eight it's something ridiculous. You don't have to do all of them. If you want if you guys only want to do half of them, that's fine. But I encourage you that if you cannot if you if you're getting them wrong, keep practicing until you can until you can get them all right. Okay. Alright. Uh if there's any comments, uh like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.